Hey everyone, Gleb here from Unix Tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to generate an SSH key pair. Once you have a key pair, it can be used for connecting to remote servers. Why is it called a key pair, you ask? It's because you actually have two parts of your digital SSH identity. You have a public key, usually a file something like this, with a dot pub at the end, and you have a private key. Public key is what your computer sends to your remote server for identification purposes. The remote server then encrypts something using your public key and sends it back. This something can only then be decrypted using your private key. That's how SSH establishes the connection and makes sure that you're actually you. So depending on what we're talking about, SSH key can mean either private or public key. But when it comes to generating an SSH key, we really mean a key pair because both the private and the public keys will be generated. What's an ED25519? It's a cryptographic implementation of the Edwards curve digital signature algorithm, EDDSA. I like ED25519 SSH keys for three main reasons. They're faster to generate and verify. They're more secure. And they're easier to work with because public key is shorter so that you can copy paste or visibly inspect it much easier than a two kilobyte RSA key, for instance. All right, then let's generate the SSH key pair. We will use the SSH keygen command. Chances are it's present on your Linux or Mac OS install already. I'm running this on my MacBook and it's already there. Parameters for SSH key again are the type of the key pair we want to generate. So ED25519 in our case, and then a comment section, just an arbitrary text that you add to the public key uh, for easier identification later. I usually specify my email address. Let's kick it off. The key pair will be generated in the standard location, which is my home dear, and then a .ssh subdirectory in it. It then asks us for a passphrase. Always, always, always provide a passphrase. What this will do is encrypt your private SSH key so that it can only be accessed after providing that passphrase back. It may be something very simple and only meaningful to you. It doesn't have to be a very complex password that's hard to type, and in fact, Passphrase doesn't really have to be a phrase. It's usually just a single word, a password. Maybe thinking that it's your private laptop or computer no one else is using, so why would you protect the SSH key with a passphrase at all? But trust me, this is a lot better and secure than leaving your private key unencrypted and exposed. You simply don't want to be risking your SSH key because having it will allow anyone to impersonate your Linux identity and access remote servers which you may then have passwordless pseudo privileges on, allowing for some real harm to be done. So set a passphrase, even if it's very simple, and let it be. Let me type the passphrase here. It's gonna ask for it again to make sure that you type it correctly and you'll never forget it. And that's it, we're done. Let's have a look. Here are the key pairs. Let's have a look at the private key. And let's have a look at the public key now. See how it has my commentary, the email that I provided. So it's very easy to identify if you have multiple keys in the single file, that this one is the one I generated for my primary email address. Remember how I said that this is a lot simpler and shorter than the typical RSA key? Well, don't take my word for it. Let's have a look. I think I have an RSA key here. See how it used to be a multi-line? Um, public key, which is not very convenient when it comes to 
copy pasting them between different servers. You don't need to do that very often, but when you do, the less hassle it is, the better. So compared to this, the ED25519 is a lot more straightforward. It's a much shorter key, it fits a single line, and um, is generally much easier to um, look for, even if you had like grab for it or something. So yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to this channel and visit my www.unixtutorial.org website. Thanks for watching. Have fun.